Good morning. Welcome to Goswa Clan. Hello. Uh, we are glad you're here. Mm-hmm. There's about 10 people who watched the first Aww. one. Thank y'all. Yeah. If you're the 10 that watched the first one and you're still here, <laughs> maybe we went down to eight. It, it's just funny to me that like people care about the circus of a life we live. <laughs> just, it's a circus. Just, it's awesome. But anyways. It's a circus. <laughs> it is for sure a circus, but I wouldn't want to be in anybody else's circus. Me either. Okay. I'm happy to be here. Okay. With you. Thank you. On the show today. Okay. So we have plenty of things to talk about. It's always when we sit down in here, we're like, well, what are we, what are we going to talk about? Sometimes we, are, we already have a plan. Sometimes we don't, but there's always plenty of stuff to talk about. Focusing on short-term rentals and Airbnb, we usually gravitate towards what's going on currently right now. Mm -hmm, Right. So one, one thing, if you're thinking about starting an Airbnb, a Verbo short-term rental, how are you going to do it? There are problems, issues, things that will come up that you will face in this market, in this industry, that you will most likely never have had an idea that this would happen until you started. Mm-hmm. And those are some of the things that we are kind are trying to plan around right now, create systems to handle right now. Talk a little bit about what, one of those biggest, the biggest issues that we're facing right now. It's kind of gross, though. Sure, I mean. Okay. It's fine. It's not like gross, gross, gross. I mean, that that grosses me out. It okay, grosses so me out, too. Plumbing, plumbing is one of our biggest hurdles right now. Is that safe to say? It is safe to say. Okay. Plumbing. So, most of our properties are um, flip fixers, fixer-uppers. Mm-hmm. It's set, we have eight doors. Six of them are... Flips or fi- fix to uh, rehab to rental. Rehabs. That's right. Rehab is a good word. So I think when we went in that, because you don't physically see the issue, you don't really know it's there. Mm-hmm. And when you're like, we're setting up a property, our guys are working there. Um, no one's taking a bath or a shower. Or Sorry, no five of the eight. Sorry, it's five of the eight. Okay. No one is... Um, they're just things that you don't think to check prior to. Yeah, and we have to get better on our rehab processes to check those things if we're taking some of the floor up and, and you know, check the plumbing. Check. Yeah. And sometimes we do. You know, a lot of the ones we did, you'd flush the toilets and run some water, and, and that was it. But a lot of these properties have, you know, the older, you know, anywhere from built in the 60s or 50s to, you know, built 20 years ago. So... And several you are, don't know. Several are pure and beam. Yeah. So, like, the house was, like, crawl space, getting under there and looking and just making mm-hmm. sure pipes are intact and all of yeah, that. Yeah, and that's your job of your plumber. You should yeah. – we have now on the the property where we're working on rehabbing right now, we checked all of it. Okay, good. And I love that we can learn from. Well, if we're not learning from uh, our mistakes, what are we doing? Uh, Fell forward, right? Yeah. So we checked all of it, and we ended up spending a lot more money on plumbing than we thought we were going to okay. spend on plumbing, but okay. that's totally fine. Well, but I think you, you either spend it on the front end or you spend it on the back end because what we have spent at one of our lake house properties yeah. has been a, like upwards of, what, seven dollars $8,000 on plumbing? Probably plumbing that already existed, existed that needed correct. to be updated, probably seven. Well, some of it was updated. Some of yeah, we, we also had a, a bad contractor on that one. So, um, that's you know also if you're if you're doing rehabs to rental, then vet your contractors, and inevitably you're going to have some bad ones. That's true. Now you can try to avoid as much of that as possible by vetting those people and talking to as many people that they have worked for as possible. Get your contractors from reputable sources. Right. Now, in today's age and society, and right now, <clears throat> physical labor is really hard to come by, mm-hmm. service labor. Mm-hmm. And so, those guys that are really good are typically going to be expensive, and they're going to be booked up. 
So that takes you to another level of plan your jobs out well. Can I add something to that? Absolutely. So I think, like for one, like some of our properties, the more extensive plumbing you're going to need, you might want to hire someone who has extensive experience. Um, and then those who just need a snake out, you might. And That's you, a good point. You can go with someone who is a little less expensive. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for us, and I'm sure anybody and everybody is going to run into this if you desire to, if you decide to do a short term rental, is your guest don't care that their hair is all in your drain. No, it's it almost feels like they're just shoving it down in there because I, we've that's had what several. It feels like, but we've I had several properties mm -hmm. that we have completely snaked out mm -hmm. two months ago. I don't think it was that long, but okay. maybe a month and a half yeah. ago, and yeah. then now rolling back around. They're completely clogged up again, like bathtubs mainly. Yeah, and we're talking like four guests later. Like it's not five guests Yeah, some later. of these are long-term. Mm -hmm. You know, people are staying a week, two weeks. Right. So what, you know, we've told them the problem. What's the solution? Okay, so I think, I've done a lot of thinking about this. Okay. I think you have to do damage control prior to even. It's like preventative damage control. If preventative maintenance? Well, this is my thing. So our last guest was upset because there was uh, there was two two dead bugs in the property. One was a water bug and one was like a really small little beetle. Both she sent pictures, both were on their back, meaning that they had ingested a pesticide because we are, have our properties maintained sprayed. Um, we ha yeah, they're sprayed because we live in the south. Yeah, it's, it's hot here. We didn't get rain for almost right. 2 months here. Yeah. And they're they're not they're everybody calls them cockroaches here but they're water bugs. Yeah. They're not actual they're just cockroach. For water. Yeah. Yes. And so someone who's coming from the north who doesn't experience bugs like that sees two bugs in the house and it is like game changer. It is. It's an I infestation. Know. Okay. And so for us who are used to that, it just it bothers me because I feel like there are people who come in and look for nit picky. Okay. Things. Let's talk about this. Okay. Let's really, okay, I'm really going to put myself in the guest position. Okay. If you're from the north or somewhere that doesn't have bugs and issues like that, they don't know. Mm -hmm. They have no idea that that is a common place right. thing so around here. Saying, like, can we put that in a listing? You are coming to the south where everything is bigger and bigger, better, including our bugs. <laughs> but we have our stuff treated. No, here's the thing that the people are going to avoid your listing if you put that in there. Even Every listing in our area could put that. If you're the only one that has it, and they say they have bugs, nobody else has bugs. Like that's like. Well, I mean, we could also include if you step outside, you're going to probably get attacked by a mosquito. We have mosquitoes. Yeah, here. we have flies. Red red wasps are bad. We have to yes. look out for those and spray for we those. They'll get in any cracks and bugs yeah. Yeah. here naturally. Yeah. The other side of that is the property that she's talking about is a. It's in a, a lower income area. We have like several different layers of, mm -hmm. of the types levels. of property levels of the types of properties that we offer. And this, this one is a low, low income area. It's decorated really nice. Our cleaners do a great job of cleaning it. They yeah. miss a spot here and there every once in a while, but that's pretty typical. Your sheets are very clean. The sheets are clean. Your bathtub you're getting in is very clean. Everything's clean mm -hmm. when you walk in. And this is a property. It's a two, two, it's a duplex. It's a two bedroom, one bath on each side, about 850, 900 square feet. It's got all new furniture in both of them. Uh, king beds. Uh, one of them has a, two king beds and or a king and a queen, and one of them has a king and or, bunk and beds. a bunk bunk beds. So uh, you get a full you get a full kitchen. Most uh, most things that you would need in the kitchen. There's still some things that we need to kind of add. Um, you get uh, inter you know, pretty fast internet. It's usually, you know, 100, 100 megs up, at least 100 megs up, 100 down. Um, we offer um, Disney Plus and um, YouTube TV at all of our locations. So I, I told you, uh, the reason I told you, like, all the things that are offered at that property is because the average nightly rental at that one side of that duplex is 75 bucks a night. Let me tell you another story about a $75 a night <laughs> place. My brother was flying out of Dallas late uh, or early, early one morning and drove to Dallas and he booked a motel right across the street from Love Field. 
for 75 bucks a night. Motel, not Motel. a hotel. Okay. Walks in. Everything's dark. He probably gets there about midnight. This is the same price. And every, he said, I could see the stains on the walls, the carpet, and the comforter. He said, I opened the door. The lights weren't even on. He said, I closed the door, walked out, and went and paid for another hotel. I say, he, you didn't say how much he paid for that. Seventy five. Seventy five. Okay. Yeah, or seventy. Okay. Now, does that even matter? I think that's what we're I, coming to I the do, conclusion I of. That, I, I, yeah, I, I think it matters to us for sure. It but does you can't not tell matter because we value a, a dollar different than someone else may value a dollar. Well, our other properties are you know anywhere from a hundred to two hundred seventy five dollars a night. I don't think that. A person who is paying seventy, I think that they value, they value that seventy five bucks a night just as if a person who had three hundred dollars a night to stay at a three hundred dollar a night place, if that makes sense, they value their their dollar. A person who only has seventy five dollars to stay they work hard at an for Airbnb, it, they worked hard game. for that money. That's what they have, mm-hmm. and they value that. And the expectations of what they get here's where. Here's where it's wrong, but the expectations of wh- what they get for $75 is the expectation that a person would have that's paying $300 a night because that $300 is what they have. The 75 is what they have. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong, but and that doesn't you get give, what you pay for. You do, but that doesn't give us the excuse of like, it's okay that there's two bugs there. I mean, like, our $275 a night property has had ants not long ago. We had to have stuff sprayed there. So it's not like the cheaper ones are the only ones with bugs or the only one with, prob- with plumbing so problems. So w- what we're getting at, if you go back to plumbing, um, that's an issue. So that's that's why we're telling you that, uh, to to create a maintenance schedule and, and put stuff over your drains or put catchers in your drains. So, Side note, if you have short-term rentals and you've got a drain clogging remedy or preventative. Yeah, like a a good one. Please comment because I have scoured the internet. I've collabed with the cleaners trying to figure things out because it's just getting There's different solutions. There's different solutions based on the different types of drains that are in that that tub and that sink. That's true. And And the, I mean, people put stuff down the sink in the kitchen too. Well, and even the toilets. I mean, women flush things down the toilets. Men flush things down the toilets that don't belong in the toilets. And so, yeah, these are just issues that that you need to be prepared for. And it may be because we've stayed at properties, properties that will have signs signs out that says, please, you are on city septic and the infrastructure is not prepared for you to flush anything other than this toilet paper down, down the drain. So maybe if we're intentional, give them a heads up, hey, you're going to have problems if you do this. So let's let's get into the numbers and see, like, help people make the decision if they want a lower rent, a lower nightly rental property. I think we talked about this already because I had to be really cautious on, like, No, I'm talking, even... like, giving them the numbers on, and they know the issues, but the numbers on what those nightly rentals are, and whether they want to do something that's seventy five dollars a night or one hundred and fifty dollars a night or two fifty two hundred fifty dollars. Now your market has to you have you have to know your market, and you have to know if you can actually get there or not. You can go on Price Labs or Air DNA to figure that out. But what? So that specific property, the one that's seventy averages about seventy five dollars a night, also averages about eighty to eighty five percent occupancy. So, and they're usually, like, they average about a three-night stay is, is what and the I average is. And I would say most of them are people coming here to work. Yeah, most of them are. It, yeah. you can get it quite a bit cheaper than a yes. hotel room here Yeah, it locally. makes sense. Yeah, and it will house at least two men who are coming mm-hmm. here to work on, whether it be a gas station or some sort of electrical. Like, we've had electricians stay. We've had plumbers stay. Like, mm-hmm. we've had a wide variety of people so okay. if you're going to go that route, let me just give you the details. Okay. You know the per night. You know the occupancy if your rates are that low. You're going to cash. Your cash flow should be 1000 to $1,200, $1,300 per side. Okay, so so 
for both of them, two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars a month cash flow. The flip side of that is you're going to have more issues. You're going to have more problems because the mindset of the person that's staying there is different than the mindset of the person that's staying in in, in in a more expensive property. Okay, let me give an let me give an example. We just got back from a very nice vacation. Mm -hmm. We agree on that. And we stayed in a very nice place. Yeah. Okay. The first night we get there, and it probably because I have Airbnbs, and so I I know what the complaints of most people are. So they're just more on my radar. Um, Laid in bed the first night in the most gorgeous cathedral ceilings. Yeah. Most gorgeous. And there was like four pretty large cobwebs up in it. And I was like, you know what? Like, it doesn't mean that this place is disgusting. It just means someone has to use a lot of effort to get up there and clean. Yeah, Those they're really tall. Really tall. But it didn't make me think any less of the property. Yeah, so you that's have a, you, the difference. Yeah, well, you have it's a different mindset. Yeah, you have a different perspective, though. You always have... The more you can connect with your customer, the better, because then you understand them and you understand what they want. And if you can meet those expectations from the customer's point of view, then you'll win. Hey, well, this particular guest that we just recently had that we're kind of going back and forth with on a resolution, Mm -hmm. we had a common ground. Like her daughter works at a place that we used to work at and we were like, there was a communication leading up to it. And so I, it would not, she would not be one that I would think would have. Yeah. I'll say that from the guest perspective, if you are a guest, when we are a guest, if there are issues that come up, let your host know. For sure. Let your host know when they come up because the majority, I would, you know, I don't know, but I would think that the majority of people who are renting their house out want to solve the problems. And the majority of people that are renting their house out don't see all the problems. We don't see all the problems because we don't stay there. And so we do rely on our guests to say, hey, this sink's um, backing up. Now we are working on with our handyman that we just hired to do a monthly check to do things like um, change the air filters out, um, wash the outside unit. It's really hot in Texas and dusty. Watch, watch the outside HVAC unit. Um, exterior window cleaning. Exterior window okay. cleaning. Change the batteries and the locks and keypads. Run the sink, tub, and to- flush the toilets to s- make sure that nothing is backing up. Check All detectors. The check, yeah, smoke detectors. Mm-hmm. All those little things that, that need to be checked every month. So we're working we're working on that to try to prevent preventative maintenance, to try to prevent issues from coming up. Going back to if you're staying at Airbnb, if you are a guest, if issues come up, just cordially, hey, this is an, and if it's an issue that's not a big deal, let it go. But this is backing up or um, there's a massive food stain in the fridge or something like there, this fridge stinks or, mm-hmm. you know, things that are going to bother you really bad during the time that you stay there. Uh, but the Airbnb that we stayed at, uh, it was beach, uh, beach type mm-hmm. access in the hills, a bunch of animals, tropical there's liz- I mean, w- the second night that we were there, there's a lizard crawling around the ceiling. I know. But you just accept, I mean. Like, do you accept it because you spent so much on, on that night, or you accept it because of conditions that you're in? Like, I I'm think the conditions. The of, okay. You know, uh, the, oh, well. There's a tarantula. They, they're. On the floor in the bathroom. Yeah, there's a tarantula on the floor, a small one. No. It, for tarantula size, yes, it was <laughs> small. Yes. I'm telling y'all, that sucker was this big. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Babe, I have a picture. Show okay. the picture. I no, no. <laughs> so but it's a tropical island and they don't they don't have central AC okay. so right the doors are you leave the doors open right. all day right. they have um they had mini splits yeah. in the bedrooms, in the bedrooms yeah. they have severe power shortages so they tell you hey, if you're going to come here do you're not going to run the AC all day no and the power goes off and on several times a day yeah so you close your, your bedroom door at night, turn your um, mini, split. mini split on, mm-hmm. and it cools down. You sleep fine. But during the day, doors are open. Yeah, Stuff's going to get in. This is the thing. If I would have been so miserable there on the first night, I would not have stayed the rest of the nights. And I think that is also another issue that we're seeing is that we have guests who bring forth multiple complaints, but 
and we try to resolve them, they stay three nights. And after their third night, they check out and they put in a request for a reimbursement. If I'm that miserable at a place, I'm not staying there past the one night. No, I think it goes back to mindset too, but that yeah. is, that's like uh, ordering a hamburger from McDonald's and seeing a, a hair in it, pulling the hair out, eating the whole hamburger, and then going up to the counter and say, hey, there was a hair in my hamburger. I want my money back. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. I just can't wrap my mind around it. Now, granted, again, I feel like when we bring these discussions to the table, they're very fresh. They're and fresh. So, okay. And maybe we shouldn't bring them when they're fresh okay. because it, you know, I can, I, I can pick up on the frustration. Okay. I was frustrated about it. I think that's another good point is, do not allow yourself to get emotional over your property it's or true. maybe an uh, unreasonable guest. And be as reasonable as you can. If you have issues, if we have issues, let's fix them. Let's make it right. We don't want somebody to come stay at the property and not feel at home Absolutely. or have a good stay. Right. That's the whole, that's, we're in the hospitality industry right. and we're supposed to be hospitable. And if we got problems, let's fix them. Let's figure it out. We do. I think everybody has problems, but I think everybody we are doing our best to navigate through them. I think when you deal with as many customers, clients that we deal with, there's going to be. Mm -hmm. Let's go from both perspectives because I want to be uh, unbiased here. Okay. There are times where we really have issues. Yeah. And we have given. Some, half, and all money back to people mm -hmm. on many occasions. Probably, probably we've probably given back f to 15, 10 to 15 guests over a year. Okay. Uh, some form of a out refund. Of how many? Uh, maybe 150. Okay. So if it's 15 out of 150, 10% or less, maybe it's probably more than two, it's probably closer to 200 stays. Mm -hmm. So 10 to 15 out of that 200. Not bad. And we're not giving full refunds to everybody, but we have because, the, okay, sorry, that was totally our fault and we did not have the resources to get there and fix it mm -hmm. at that time. So we're really sorry. Also, on the other side of that, you are going to have some bad guests. Mm -hmm. And do not let a bad guest, a circumstance, dictate mm -hmm. your emotional state yeah and that's why we're realizing we've got to hire yeah. a manager because like when we were on vacation we both got messages constantly from guests and it's like it's hard to even like separate from it and so there yes. needs to be the middleman that is not emotionally or financially invested in it and because I think for me I'm like I work really hard to decorate and to plan out and make sure that when they walk in the door, they feel home and mm -hmm. it's comfortable. And so and it's, it's hard. a slap in your face. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, Blaze. Our puppy dog is. He's here. down below the camera, hitting the camera. It's fine. We're still in camera. It's all okay. good. <laughs> He's just getting comfortable. He is. Okay. Yes. Understand, understand that. And, and, we, we have to, in order to get to that point where we can hire a manager to manage all the properties, we need to get to 10, 12, 14 doors, and we're, and we're not there yet. But we, we can't just, you can't just hire a manager and expect all the problems to be solved. We have to solve the problems and create processes for, right. hey, when this happens, this is a solution. Right. When this happens, this is a solution. And if something comes up that we don't have a solution for, then when that problem happens, we create a solution for it, and now it's a structure, and it goes into the, the processes, the, the order of operations. It is more important for you to understand and create and write out this order of operations before you hire a manager mm -hmm. than trying to – there's still stuff that's going to come up, but then trying to figure everything out on the fly. Mm -hmm. Systems first, if you have the time to do it, and then uh, hiring the manager to put – put that in place now you can also just hire a management company but a management I feel like you lose so much of the personal touch whenever you do that you lose personal touch and you're going to lose uh cash flow right yeah 
because most good management companies for short-term rentals are 20 to 30 okay. percent of your top line revenue so if you make say you got a property that's making 10 grand a month mm-hmm. you're going to send they're going to keep three grand of that on or top 2, of what it, whatever platform we're on is keeping fees yeah this airbnb is only three percent so okay. it's not bad but verbo is like eight percent okay so that is uh Oh, yeah, I think we, I hope, I really don't want that to come across as like just a big old vent. Um, I don't think it's a vent. I think it is, hey, this is a problem. And we, this is a podcast that I would want to hear because it prepares me like, okay, yeah. these are things that are going to happen. Um, we can tell you great things about the Airbnbs. The money is really, it, it, it's done well. All right, let's, let's, let's just, let's say something positive because. When we sit down at our dinner table at night with our kids, mm-hmm. what do we say? What do you say, typically? Best part about your day. What is the best part about your day? Mm-hmm. What's the best part? And it can't just be like, oh, I... I uh, I snuck a Snickers in my lunchbox and ate it at lunch, no. you know? like. No, it has to be, like, intentional. Like, what... Yeah. What... Think back and, like, what was the highlight? What made you feel special? Or what did you do for somebody else that made them feel special? Or... Um, it's just, it's a reflection of, because we go through the motions so much. The kids get up, go to school, they come home, they want to debrief, vet out on electronics or whatever. Um, and so it's our time to really be intentional. I value sitting at the table and eating dinner um, together. I do too. I absolutely do too. And it is a reminder to not focus on the negative. Mm-hmm. You can get stuck there. Focus on the positive. Miller and I had this conversation this morning. Okay. The lines, for the school lines it were terrible. It really put her in a dither. Yeah, and I said, hey, this is your time to practice. Like, you can let your mental state get out of control and only focus on you might not get to school on time. Like, yeah. we, we planned ahead. We had plenty of time, and we still barely got her to school on time. Okay. Was she the last to be dropped She was off? the last to be okay. dropped off. And so it was a time to practice. Mm-hmm. Like, focus in your mind like focus on the positive and if we get locked into the negative now this this could ruin your whole day it almost did yesterday okay it almost so this did is yesterday. a good it's a good lesson it so is. what is the best, the best thing about about running short-term rentals for me because like decorating and like creating an experience fills my cup that's what I want to focus on. Mm. I don't want to focus on the negative aspect of it because then it just like that doesn't fill your such cup. A damper. But there's yeah. somebody out there that this kind of stuff fills Absolutely. their cup, solving yeah. problems, yeah. Hosp- hospitality industry. Right. There's somebody out there that we can hire that is excited about these yeah. ki- kind of things. Yeah. And just because we aren't, right? Sometimes we will project our feelings to other people that we hire, which is do not do that. Yeah. You may not like doing something and don't, you know, if you hire somebody to do it, don't say, I hate doing this stuff, um, but I want you to do it. Um, No, find the people that like it, that it fills their cup. My favorite thing about running the Airbnb business is the possibility of automation and structure and systems and we're not there yet, but we're, we're getting closer so that I'm able to focus on the things that do fill my cup, which is this right here, content. Mm-hmm. I love producing, making content. I love the vision of business, of where, you know, I'll lay in bed at night thinking about properties and how to create experiences and what that looks like and how a guest feels when they walk in. Um, those are the things that I really, really want to do. And when I have to, when, what takes away from that is when I have to deal with a $75 issue on a possible refund on a possibly reasonable or unreasonable guest. It hurts my heart that we might've made a mistake and, and somebody didn't have a good time. And it also hurts. We will take ownership in whatever part. Like for instance, there was some cobwebs underneath one of the kitchen cabinets our cleaners missed it, and I told her, "I'm really sorry. Our cleaners missed that. That's on us. We yeah. will we'll take ownership in that." Yeah. 
So be realistic. If you're getting in this business, if you're in this business already and you're just self-managing one or two properties there, you know, you can do that. You can probably avoid a lot of, a lot of the issues. Right. Um, but if you try to start scaling, there are going to be issues that pop up to the surface that you would not know about. And we'll try to prepare you for that um, based on our experience so that you don't have to go through. You can learn two ways. You can learn by making mistakes yourself or you can learn by taking the mistakes that other people mm-hmm. have made and learning from them. Mm-hmm. I want to be smart enough to learn from other people's mistakes. But a lot of times I'm not that smart. <laughs> I, I make my own mistakes because I'm hard-headed. Okay. Still learn from them. All right. Appreciate you guys joining us. Y'all have a good day. Uh, in the comments, or sorry, in the description, there's uh, links to our listings if you want to check those out. There is um, links to products that we use at our properties. We do make a small cut if you use our link to do that. So we, we are thankful that helps support what we're doing here. It takes time to put this together. Um, there are There's a, our Airbnb link if you want to sign up to be a host. Um, and if you do that, contact us some way Um, you can send us a message on facebook just say hey i signed up under your link and my listing's done wait when you have your listing done let us know i'd love to look at it and if you want tips and pointers based on our now i'm not a we're not anywhere near an expert of what other some other people are at yeah but we are um we do have eight doors and we can i can courtney and i can offer some we'd love to help if you're going to sign up under that link we're going to get something for it financially and we're willing to provide value to you by looking at your listing that is completed and just giving you a couple pointers. Um, so there's also, if you're interested in doing your own podcast show, I don't know how many people are interested in that, but there is links in there of how to do it technically. Um, what what I don't there may be some other stuff in there. I'll just try to put as much stuff yeah. pr- provide as much value as possible. So we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch and listen to the show. <laughs> and uh, remember, love God, love others, and let everything you do reflect that. Yep. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.